My name is Scott Chaloner and you are listening to the Leaders' Council podcast for the people who run the country and the people who keep the country running. Now, as regular listeners of our programme will know very well, part of our mission here at the Leaders' Council is to bring you a variety of distinct perspectives on leadership. And to this end, we're joined on today's programme by Elliot Newsham, Commercial Manager at Peak, a decision intelligence company which aims to place artificial intelligence at the centre of all commercial decision making. Um, Elliot, a very warm welcome. Welcome to you today, and by all means, thank you for joining us on the show. Hey, Scott. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. Keen to get into this, but yeah, really appreciate you taking the time to talk to me. And yeah, happy to share my views on on AI as a topic and more broadly what Peak are trying to achieve. So yeah, let's get into it. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it'd be a good start just for those listeners that might not be familiar with yourself and Peak to just sort of elaborate on what the company looks to do and uh, what sort of your role would involve within that. Yeah, no, amazing. Happy to do that. So, yeah, I joined Peak, it feels like forever ago now. It was around four years ago. Uh, I joined the company when we were, had around 45 employees, and we've now gone on uh, a bit of a journey, and we're at just shy of 400 employees over the past four years. So I've been on this massive trajectory of growth. I think why Peak was founded, there was the three founders that sort of sat around eight years ago and had general frustrations, really, of trying to get data from uh, siloed systems across a business. So whether that's data that you might be using in a spreadsheet, data that's sat in a a source system like a CRM or an ERP, they all shared this frustration that trying to connect the data and then start to run analytics on top of it to drive a decision and action was a really difficult thing to do. And they founded the business with that belief that there's got to be an easier way to start to do this sort of thing. I guess fast forward to where we are today, obviously a lot's changed over the past eight years, but that core value of trying to get value from data still remains at the heart of what Peak do. In terms of what we do, we're a decision intelligence business. Um, Appreciate that might be a new term for a lot of listeners here. And really, it's the next step on from artificial intelligence. Uh, The definition for peak, it's the commercial application of AI to guide decision making. And something that we're really passionate about as a business is using AI and technology to drive a business outcome. I think you hear a lot about artificial intelligence being this amazing, sexy technology, and it's always in the news. But we want it to be more than just a fancy science project. It's got to drive some sort of commercial outcome. So, yeah, that's that's why we position ourselves as a business. And, yeah, my role itself, I work with our current customers and prospective customers really quite simply to see if there's a fit. Can we help you guys deliver value from the data sets you've got available? Yeah, so would you say for you that uh, sort of delivering commercial value is more about what AI is defined as? Because as you said there, I mean, it's like we we often hear it as sort of glamorized as this sort of big sexy technology. And we probably have sort of visions of iRobot or something in our head when we hear the term <laughs> artificial intelligence. But it's it's not quite like that, is it, in the reality? I think it's fair to say. Yeah, I think there's a variety of definitions. But for me, I, I like to try and keep things simple, which I'll try and do throughout this podcast. But for me, it's the predictions and categorizations over the top of data, plain and simple. Um, how can you use those to drive a commercial outcome or some form of decision? Um, and so how does Peak's AI work in sort of delivering that commercial value then? Yeah, so there's a whole host of ways we deliver, but really it's three things. Um, firstly, over the past eight years, the, the team have developed a world-class leading platform. Um, very simply, what it's able to do is unify multiple data sets from across a business. So I mentioned a couple of examples earlier. But really, it's any data source you've got available, we can unify that in our platform and get it centralized. I think once you've done that, that's an amazing foundational step to get all your data into one place. And that's something that a lot of businesses struggle with. But once it's there, what are you actually looking to do with that? And this is where our own data science team or our customer's data science team can start to build, train, and configure those machine learning algorithms to create those predictions and categorizations. So that's where the the kind of magic happens, really. And once you've created those predictions, then an example of this could be, can we predict what stock we're going to need on shelves in our grocery retailer to prevent waste and prevent stock outs? Um, So once you've got that insight, that's obviously a really powerful thing for a business to know, but it's got to be surfaced back into the business in a way where that end user can use it day to day. You know, if we say to them, right, we need you to learn a completely new system, a new process, new tools, um, you're going to get quite a lot of resistance from those internal users. So Mm -hmm. the final part of what Peak do is surfacing that intelligence in a way that works for people. So if they say, actually, Elliot, we really like using spreadsheets day to day. Can you push it out as a spreadsheet? Yep, we're able to do that. Or if they want something a little bit more sophisticated, like a dashboard where they can click and query the data, we can also do that as well. Um, So we provide that technology. But equally coupled with that, we recognize as a business that, you know, just giving people 
a technology platform isn't the be all and end all. There's obviously a lot of training that needs to happen to be able to do that and get it off the ground. So coupled with our technology, we provide every customer with what we call a win team. So that's data scientists, data engineers, customer success managers, AI consultants, uh, people like myself. So always be that kind of, I guess that continuous support um, over time to make sure that that solution is delivering value as time goes on. Yep, certainly makes sense from my perspective. And I think that sort of sums up well sort of why AI is important in its applications because it allows businesses to get hold of that key data quickly and it allows quicker decision making, doesn't it? Whereas you're not having people trawling through sort of reams and reams of data on a manual setting and obviously trying to then sort of come up with a conclusion based on that. um, Obviously, artificial intelligence, it can do it at such a quicker rate, can't it? Yeah, and I think, you know, AI is a, is a topic. It's been around for a long time, but I think we've only just heard about it in the past 10 years. You know, the first form of AI was actually used in the 1950s. I think what's changed today and what's massively accelerated as a sector of technology is the compute power and the technology advancements that have happened recently. You know, I think if you compare the amount of data that data scientists, data engineers can analyze now versus 60 years ago, it's wildly different. So being able to apply AI at scale is really what's changed the game and been able to use multiple data sets, query it, spot trends, analyze it very quickly at the click of a fingers is really what's helping organizations use that now to drive that decision making quickly at speed. Yeah, and do you think that maybe it's sort of the sort of increased independence of AI, if we call it that, that's maybe sort of making some of the doubters worry a little bit about it? Yeah, I think... um, you know, there's always like a, there's a, a split room whenever we go and speak to businesses. I think there's people who believe that AI is the future and they can really see the value. And then there's maybe the second half that, back to your point earlier, Scott, that believe that AI is like iRobot and it's here to take over the world. And in reality, it isn't. So I think a lot of what we do in our conversations, it's really educating people that it's not here to steal your jobs. It's here to help you make better decisions day to day. Yeah. There's always like a, a proof of value phase, if you will, whether it's a couple of conversations or giving them a demonstration where people actually get to see it and understand how it's going to help them. Um, Because I think there's a lot of misconceptions. Like you say, if you read about AI in the news, you could probably get a conception that it's something wildly different to what it actually is. Yeah, exactly right. And so people might have sort of these kind of very wild ideas about what the disadvantages and the negatives of AI might be. But from your perspective, I mean, it's like, what are some of the downsides of it, if indeed there are any? Yeah, and I think this this probably come onto a, a wider topic that I'm quite passionate about, but it's almost like, for me, the disadvantage is leaning to more about the ethics of AI and is it ethical and is it good to use from a day-to-day perspective. I think if you look at the advantages for me, using this technology that's super powerful for, for good um, is a great thing. And obviously, the definition of good by everyone is individually is very different. But for me, if we could use AI to predict how our lorries and our trucks should move to minimize the number of journeys they have to make to get part of the customer. Obviously, that's a great thing. It's removing CO2 from networks. It's mm. reducing costs, not requiring as much fuel. That's an amazing you know, application of the technology. But equally, on the flip side, you know, if you can use AI to predict customers who are likely to react to, let's say, a coupon or a discount for, it could be a gambling company. You know, If that gambling company is pushing that, that ad- advertisement to a customer who perhaps isn't in the best financial state, they might have an addiction toward gambling, you can almost see that them reacting to that offer, spending all of their, could be life savings, could be all sorts on a gambling tool or app and then wasting all their money and then become bankrupt. I would argue that's a disadvantage and isn't something that's good for society, but it's almost like, where do you draw that line? Yeah, I can certainly see where you're coming from there. I mean, that, that's probably more the kind of ethical issue that we're looking at, isn't it? Rather than, oh, is this um, robot going to become, you know, self-sentient and take over the world sort of thing <laughs> yeah. that, um, that people might have the idea of. Um, so we talked about we talked about a couple of examples there of how AI can be positively used. It can be used to obviously predict sort of um, maybe the level of groceries we might need on our shelves at any one time. Obviously predict how many lorries we might need in our fleet. Um, are these things that are examples of what's actually AI is being used for today, or is this more the potential of it and it's maybe being used in different applications at the moment? Yeah, no, both of those examples there are, are real examples of what mm. we're delivering to, to customers at peak. I think um, some examples of that in work in practice, you know. We work with a large grocery retailer where we manage to reduce their fresh food wastage bill by a million pounds a month. And equally, from a transportation perspective, removing 147 tonnes of CO2 out of a network. So that's that's real. That's happening day to day. I think more broadly, where is AI applied? Um, typically, I think the fastest growing sector for the application of AI is in financial services. And I'll be honest, that's not a sector that I particularly play in at peak. 
But, you know, if you think about the ability to predict fraud before it happens, obviously that's a super valuable thing to retain customers and better for banks. Um, so there's a lot of that technology being acquired, applied across those sectors. And I think going back to the point around AI being, you know, particularly sexy technology, people probably assume that AI is being applied in the more glamorous sectors, um, maybe retail, obviously financial services being one as well. But we're also having a lot of conversations that have customers in perhaps more traditional old school manufacturing businesses who are taking the leap to use AI to really advance as a business and kind of outdo their competition. So yeah, I'd say it's rapidly expanding across multiple sectors and I wouldn't you know, rule out some of the more traditional businesses that perhaps seem like they're stuck in their old ways because they are making those those leaps and those jumps forward to um, yeah use the technology for better. Yeah, so it's not just sort of transport, the the food industry, the retail industry, and manufacturing. I mean, I mean this this could be applicable. I mean, in a lot of settings, couldn't it? I mean, you could use it in hospitality, even perhaps. Yeah, and I think the really simple way to think about it is, you know, any sector, as long as there's a frequency of, of transaction or frequency of movement, you can capture that data and start to make predictions. So, any industry that has that sort of pattern, which you know the majority of them do, you can apply AI in whatever way possible. And the, the question you've got to ask yourself is. You know, in that sector, in that business, if you could predict anything apart from the winning lottery numbers, what would you like to predict and try and get AI to answer that question for you? It's fantastic, isn't it? The potential that it really has. Um, and like I say, we talked about some of like the ethical issues about say you use it to obviously um, advertise a gambling company and that leads to problems for certain individuals. But um, are there any other sort of major underlying issues with the ethics of AI that sort of really scream out to you at this point in time? I think not from an ethical perspective, I think, you know, it's it's where do you draw that line in? I think something that's more broadly, probably in my personal opinion, issues around social media is there's no real policing of that. You know, everyone's got a free reign to be able to do what they want. So I do think over the next few years that there might be some strict uh, rules put in place or regulations. But I think from a dis- disadvantage perspective, obviously, Scott, we've spoken a lot around the advantages and how powerful it can be for organizations and this big value piece that it is. But equally, I think from a, maybe not so much a disadvantage, but maybe potential blockers is it's a really hard thing to actually get off the ground. Um, speaking to one of our lead data scientists, you know, a, a, a quote from him, which I won't swear, but it's really effing hard was his word to actually be able to embed a project that continually delivers value. So yeah. I think for businesses to get on board with it, you know, let's not be naive. There are some, some things that need to happen. You need to invest in a lot of resource to have the right people there. So data scientists, data engineers, they're not an easy resource to come by. Coupled with that, you'll need to have you know either one technology platform like Peak or multiple to be able to have the right data in place, the ability to start to create these algorithms, and then something to push that back into the business. I think those two things coupled together obviously cost a fair bit of money, but equally time that you'd need to invest back into the business. So, you know, there's um, a worrying stat out there that I think is 80% of all data projects fail, which Gartner put out there. Um, there's a reason that it's 80% because it is a hard thing to do, but I think there's more and more companies like Peak, like others, who are there to remove some of those blockers and start to help businesses really take advantage of the technology. And you can argue it's a worthy investment as well because, like I say, it takes a, a hell of a lot of time away from sort of analysing data personally, doesn't it? And as well as that, I suppose the competitive advantage that you might gain is also going to be quite substantial because, it, as, we, as we've seen with the retail example, it can lead to some incredible um, sort of resource savings, can't it? Yeah, 100%. I think the advantage is definitely there, but I think trying to get multiple people within a business on board with that and that real understanding that it is going to be difficult, it is going to take a bit of time, but we're going to get there. I think obviously we've seen over the past couple of years uh, the, the whole macroeconomic effects that businesses are facing because of coronavirus, Ukraine, everything else. They've probably got other priorities to get on with, but yeah, I definitely think it's a worthwhile investment uh, taking forward. And I think people might see it because it is a big investment from a time and cost perspective people probably assume it's for the big boys of the world so amazon for instance a great example of using ai on amazon.com i think they attribute 30 percent of their total revenue to the little recommendation engine at the bottom so you know when you bought a product and it says customers who bought this also bought and it's always really accurate and you end up clicking it i do anyway um that's an example of them using it and really taking benefits but you know you've got to recognize they're a huge business they've got a lot of capital they can invest back into the business so yeah, I guess a passion of mine is trying to enable those smaller businesses and perhaps more traditional to see the value and start to take those leaps forward. Yeah, it just goes to show, doesn't it, with that Amazon example that you sort of have these glamorized ideas of AI and it just goes to show what it actually can be like in action. It can be so simple, but it can be so, so, so very effective. And it's almost so subtle, isn't it, that you almost don't notice things like that, do you? But it does have such a massive impact. 
Yeah, and I think AI is in our everyday, and this is the other thing. I think you, you read a lot about the glamorous side of AI being robots and everything else that's going to take over the world, but people don't realize how much AI is in our day-to-day. I think the Amazon example there is a great one, but equally, a business like Netflix, you know, I certainly find when I go on there, that front page has got content that I want to view. That, again, is a recommendation in the background, trying to predict what content or what movie you're going to be likely to watch next based on what, you, what you've watched previously. So they're constantly building this picture up of, as a customer, what your preferences are, what you like to watch, what you could be like to what, likely to watch next, and um, to try and keep you on their platform and keep watching their documentaries, series, programs, movies, etc. So yeah, it's definitely in our day to day that some people don't realise. And I think obviously that's a prime example of the more data and the bigger picture that it starts to accumulate. I suppose the more effective. AI becomes over a long-term period because it has sort of that ability to sort of predict more, make better decisions, I guess. Yeah, 100%. And if you think about like the move to buying things digitally through COVID, you know, when you purchase something now, the amount of detail you've got to fill out there, they're almost like breadcrumbs that you're leaving across a website. Even if you don't purchase, even if you just click a product, that's captured somewhere and you can start to build this digital footprint of what you're like as a customer, what your preferences could be. And yeah, I think going back to that compute power, I think businesses have now got the advantage to be able to capture all of that data and try and get it into some sort of unified view to paint these pictures to then drive those outcomes. So, yeah, I think where we are today in the world, um, businesses are definitely using that to their advantage and starting to um, you know, really take advantage of all the data they've accumulated. Absolutely right. And as businesses start to really take advantage of that and, you know, more heads turn towards AI, you know, as a solution, as something which has this immense potential. And um, I suppose at peak, I mean, you're sort of doing a lot behind the scenes to sort of really champion that now into the future. Yeah, 100%. And I think, you know, open and honestly, we weren't always an AI business. I think when we first ever got started, it was just about reporting with data. So how can we use all the data that we captured to start to create reports on what actually happened, what trends can we spot? But now, with, again, with the advancements of the compute power and the, the people skills and the technology, you can start to take that report and take the next step. So if reporting is very good at telling us about what happened last week from a sales perspective, could we use AI to start to predict the future, to then drive decisions on what stock we hold, what customers we target, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah, really taking and, and being the pioneers in the sector to try and um, take that next step. Yeah, and so for decision intelligence itself, um, I suppose if we were to look ahead maybe a year from now, just before we sort of finish up on the program, Elliot, um, what exactly are sort of some of your goals and ambitions for the technology over the course of this uh, next year? And uh, what are you really hoping to uh, to achieve with it? Yeah, I think I think the really like transformational piece of all of this is businesses are probably just getting on the ladder now and, and applying AI in one area of the business. And for, for a simple example's sake, Let's say across your business, we will look to engage with a marketing department, which would all be around predicting consumer behavior so you can target them better with communications. You might be applying AI in that one area, which is super powerful. But when that becomes really clever is when you connect that to the back end of your business. So let's say with the marketing team, we're predicting when Scott is in market for his next pair of trainers. Mm. We can push Scott a discount code um, a week before he's likely to purchase. But then if you can connect that data to your supply chain team to say, Scott's in market for these Nike Air Force Ones, for instance, we're going to send him an offer on Friday with a 10% off, you need to make sure that product is actually in stock because you can imagine from a customer experience perspective and this actually happens, you log on, Scott, you receive that offer, great news, it's payday, I'm going to go and buy those pair of trainers, <coughs> excuse me, and then the product isn't there. From a customer experience perspective, that's, that's damaging and would probably lead to you going to a competitor so where this becomes super transformational, and this is definitely the nirvana of where businesses want to get to, mm. is connecting those AI models and solutions across the entire business. And that's where you really unlock the value and create these better customer experiences um, and leap ahead of your competition. It's incredible, isn't it? Just how it can all sort of link together to deliver an experience like that. Absolutely. And uh, like I say, I, sp- I suppose um, like over your priority over the uh, the next 12 months then is going to be really kind of pushing the potential of that and just to sort of shame businesses. I mean, it's like that, you know, when we join everything together in this way, I mean, these are the ultimate possibilities. And I suppose a lot of people um, are really going to come on board with that. Yeah, 100 percent. And I think the other thing that, that we're aiming to do as a business is just trying to reduce the time to value. I think earlier on, we recognized that this is a, a really difficult thing to get off the ground. And, you know, we pride ourselves in being able to deliver these solutions in kind of like three to four months versus typically if you were to build these things internally, one year, two year plus. 
but just trying to reduce that time to value to again get more businesses excited about how quickly this can be embedded in your organization and really drive change so you know advancements in the platform uh, investments from a people perspective is probably where we're heading for the next three five plus years yeah, I, I suppose as well that like with, with decision intelligence as good as it is, I mean, that even then, I mean, you, you join it up to the other applications in the business, but that itself has the potential to update and to improve and get even better. So I suppose the potential really, really is limitless, isn't it? Yeah, and that's a really important point. I think one great thing with AI machine learning um, is the ability to have that continuous learning loop. So when we suggest actions or suggest outputs, we'll record what the result was and then that feeds into the model and it gets continually smarter over time. So the the more data points you can feed it, the more accurate it'll get, the better outcomes you're going to get as a business as well. It's absolutely fantastic. And like I say, I mean, I'm sure there are plenty of business owners that are tuning into this and uh, probably um, sort of with pricked up ears thinking about, well, what we could do with a, uh, a technology like this. And um, I believe that if... Uh, you do want to find out a little bit more about Peak and the uh, the work that the business does and just have a look at decision intelligence that bit more broadly. I suppose peak.ai would be the best port of call online, wouldn't it, Elliot? Yeah, 100%. If you reach out there or reach out to me directly on LinkedIn, I'm always open for a conversation. Um, and something that me and Scott were chatting about earlier for the listeners, we host a, an annual conference every year, which is all around gathering data leaders, people who've got a genuine interest in AI, data, technology, um, multiple views from multiple of our customers and um, multiple sectors as well. So more than welcome to invite people listening to this. Tickets are usually £200, but I have my own personal discount code and happy to, um, for the benefit of the podcast and the Leaders Council, provide free tickets. So I'll insert some links um, to the invite with Scott after this. But yeah, always open for a conversation if anyone has any questions, thoughts or feedback. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. And um, for those tuning in as well, if you do feel that you, you know had your own organization, um, you run your own business and you have something to say about your own company or even about AI, as we've been discussing today, then don't forget you two can apply to be on the program to share your point of view via leaderscouncil.co.uk forward slash apply. Um, for now, Elliot, thank you ever so much for joining us on the show today. It's been an absolute pleasure having you and uh, would love to uh, have you back on in uh, the next year or so once we see sort of how decision intelligence is getting on and just catch up how it's all coming together for you no amazing really enjoyed that scott thanks very much for having me and uh, yeah look forward to catching up again soon yeah and to everyone tuning in again i do hope that you all enjoyed hearing from elliot newsham from peak today and um, to all tuning into the program you have been listening to the leaders council podcast with your host scott challoner please all take care and goodbye